Yo, yo, yo. What it do? What up? Happy Thursday, man. Oh, man. We're back, baby. We're back. What's up, Vault? What's going on, man? What have you been up to, brother? I feel like I haven't seen you in a few days. How you been, dude? Um, We got video gaming news. Getting ready to pop off for today, June 20th. Been busy? Yeah, I figured. I figured. Uh, hopefully good busy, dude. Not bad busy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, I don't necessarily know what bad busy would be, but... You know. Doing good. Oh, I'm good, brother. Yeah. Got too much sun yesterday, if you can't tell. <laughs> I'm a little bit sunburned. <laughs> yeah. Went to the pool with the kids, dude. Got a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a sunburn, but it's alright, dude. It's alright. It feels good, you know. Felt good to be out in the sun for a little bit yesterday, you know. <clears throat> Showing off that big old thick dad bod, you know. You know what I'm saying? Um, water's nice, dude. It was a really nice day, so we went out and hung out at the pool for a little bit. I'm doing good, bro brother, doing good. Loving life, man. Uh, hope everybody's doing good. Everybody. we got, uh, video gaming news coming up for June 20th, and then we'll dive into, uh, probably Ghost of Tsushima for a little bit, and then probably a little bit of X Defiant, dude. That's the way it's been going for us, so... We'll do, uh, we'll do some Ghost of Tsushima, and then we'll do some X Defiant, and if anybody wants to play, you know, play together. Cool. That'll be the jam. Let's go ahead and do it. Ah, glad you're doing good, brother. Love to hear it, man. Jesus, my bot, bro, bots have just been out in full effect here lately, haven't they? It's crazy. Looks like Shin Megami Tensei 5 is doing very well so far. Marvel vs. Capcom, that was a big deal, dude. The collection uh, shown off during the Nintendo Showcase looked really good. I knew there would be a lot of people going nuts about that. Yeah, the new Princess Zelda game looked pretty dope as well. Amazon's Throne and Liberty MMO coming to the West in September. I don't think I've heard of this one. Let's take a look. Yeah, we'll recap the Nintendo Direct, even though it was two days ago now. I wasn't live yesterday, so we watched the Nintendo Direct after our news segment on Tuesday. It was very good. Uh, surprisingly. I, I honestly did not expect much out of that Nintendo Direct. Uh, just simply because they have so much coming at the beginning of next year for their new hardware, their software to go along with it, stuff like that. But uh, it was I was really pleasantly surprised. Go through digital trends on there. So we'll recap that. There's a lot of good stuff actually. Yeah, we looked at this on Tuesday, Captain Blood. Like, finally releasing 20 years later. 
<laughs> it looks kind of wild. Yeah. Plucky Squire is actually one of those games that I was really surprised to not see during um, Devolver's showcase. Um, there were a number of games actually. Skate Story, Plucky Squire, Baby Steps, uh, and one or two more that I, I really was surprised to not see anything about during Devolver's showcase. Some of their more anticipated upcoming games that they, they didn't promote at all, which was kind of wild. But Plucky Squire looks really cool. X Defiance getting Team Deathmatch tomorrow. Let's take a look. Oh no. <laughs> Bro, are you kidding me? Marvel's Wolverine video game in trouble has Sweet Baby Ink on board. That is a that's a bad name to have a, uh, you know, attributed to to your project right now. The Sweet Baby Ink um, it's a bad, it's a bad, bad organization to have attributed to, uh, your projects right now. We'll look into it. This looks like speculation. I'm not going to dive into it. Microsoft is refunding Redfall's Bite Back Edition. That's uh, basically your telltale sign there that they are letting that game die. It, I, I'm pretty sure. We've talked about this notion so many times. Game Pass versus PlayStation Plus, which subscription should you invest in? PS Plus will never be the same subscription services as Game Pass until they decide. So if you're just going strictly off of who is offering more as a service to its subscribers, Game Pass wins. PS Plus will never stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Game Pass because Game Pass gives day one releases on their platform, right? That's just a fact. It's, there's no, no way to go around that. There, it is what it is, you know. And um, PlayStation and Sony have been very blunt and, and upfront and vocal about how they don't ever plan on doing that for their own subscription service. So, um, I think strictly, you know, taking bias away from it, um, you have to look at it as Game Pass definitely being the service that, that gives subscribers a much better offering because of that fact. Now, it's, it's impossible not for, mo for most people to not look at these services in a, a uh, biased fashion because most people that buy into these services are either Xbox fans or they are uh, PlayStation fans. Now, aside from the fact that it is also a much more PC-friendly service, also Game Pass is, Game Pass is a more PC-friendly service than PlayStation Plus is. And so usually if you've got somebody on, on the PC, uh, heavy PC gaming side of the spectrum, 
I believe that they're more inclined to buy into Game Pass as well versus PS Plus because Game Pass is a more PC friendly subscription service as well. But PlayStation is of the, you know, uh, they've got this more aggressive stance nowadays to become more PC friendly. We're seeing their hardware become more uh, PC compatible. Uh, their games are coming to PC faster than they used to, but still not even close to the same um, rate at which, you know, Microsoft and Xbox does there. So, you know, I do think that when you're talking about which one should you invest in, it's going to be a very subjective kind of decision based on what your preferences are and, and what platform you platforms you uh, enjoy the most. But... You know, and from a non-biased view, I do think the Game Pass is the better service, and has been for quite some time. Yeah, uh, underrated 16-bit classics just got new life on the Switch. We're probably gonna hit this in the everything announced stuff on the uh, Nintendo showcase, so we'll, we'll dive into that. PlayStation Leak teases next PS2 game coming to PS5 and PS4. Let's see what this is. I don't know if we've already hit on this or not, but we'll find out. Oh, Luna adds games from GOG and launches in three more countries. Let's take a quick peek. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think Sony's actually been at Gamescom for a number of years now. Yeah, third year in a row, so. Just know, Sony's skipping Gamescom this year, and it's been this way for the past three years now so it's not really a, a surprise wait what what's up soup Are you talking about storage? I'm telling you, bro, soup is the best at just coming in here and throwing in very limited information and just expecting people to pick up on it. Oh. You think that I'm going to know what that M2 and M3 is a reference to Apple, dude? I don't care about Apple. Most people don't. Apple's trash, dude. <laughs> Brother. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, I know what you're doing right now, brother. You come in here doing this every day. <laughs> You know how long PCs have, have had that kind of stuff, dude? You know how long PCs have been able to uh, play the games that Max are now just getting, getting to the point of being able to play? 
<laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and at a, lo a lower price point? <laughs> I mean, it's the truth, though. I mean, here, I, I'll say this. I'm glad. I'm glad for all the Apple users out there. You're finally getting, you know, getting to the point of where you're able to play games. <laughs> you know? Congratulations. Cannot recommend enough that you look into maybe not using Apple products, though. Terrible company. Terrible company. <laughs> They're terrible, dude. They're so bad. They're so bad. He does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is what I don't understand. This is what I don't understand. What has Apple done? What has Apple done for you to make you so loyal and devoted? What is it? This is what this is what I don't understand about people. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Stop it, dude. Stop it. <laughs> Brother. You act like it's uh, they're, they're they're the only technology, you know, yeah. laptop manufacturer that can do that. That's, come on, man. I'm done. I'm done. Yo, you answered my question. <laughs> nothing. They've done nothing for you. <laughs> you just... You just like Apple for no reason. <laughs> you just like Apple for no reason. <laughs> because their name's Apple. That's why. Yeah. That's what it is. All right. You're talking about the 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 uh, uh <clears throat> You're talking about the very efficient um, <clears throat> Apple software, right? The, where they they push out updates to slow down software, so people buy new new hardware with new operating system. That's what you're talking about, right? You're talking about that 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 software. <laughs> That's what you're talking about, right? <laughs> so efficient, dude so efficient what a great company yeah gotcha gotcha why Marvel vs. Capcom fighting collection isn't on Xbox consoles <laughs> we'll be talking about Metroid Prime 4 when we go over the uh, Nintendo Showcase from Tuesday. 
<laughs> with the Supra. You just came in here and you were just like, man, I need, uh, you know, OA wasn't streaming yesterday. I wasn't able to incite violence in the, uh, in the community and you were ready to roll this morning, huh? Like, oh, he's back, baby. He's back after his day off. I'm ready to go, dog. I'm ready to go. I'm ready. To, I'm ready to start riling people up, dude. <laughs> Hmm. We already talked about it. this is the Captain Blood stuff. How are you doing, Soup? Let's start with that. How are you, my friend? How's life, dude? How's your uh <clears throat> new waifu, as it were? You know? Yo, what's up, baby? Good, good. Now back to one UI. No, let's talk about let's let's keep going with this whole <clears throat> very against Apple. She is, of course. Well, I mean that makes sense because most people should be, you know, <clears throat> just like the aesthetic. <laughs> well, you're gonna pay for it too, boy. What's up, Davey? How you doing, buddy? <clears throat> <laughs> Blue Point Games still working on an original. We'll find out what that is at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Beyond Good and Evil delisted ahead of the 20th anniversary edition reveal this week. Interesting. Yeah, we'll talk about this in the Nintendo Directory uh, recap. I mean, dude, I'm on her side. Trying to get past the first area of Hollow Knight. Nice, Davey. Yeah. You got it, brother. You'll get it. It's a tough game. You'll get it, though. <clears throat> you know I'm on her side, Sue. You are so crazy, dude. Let's go one more page since we were down yesterday and we'll see what we can find here. I love to hear that you're playing Hollow Knight, brother. <clears throat> My best friend's playing it right now, too. He's actually kind of finishing it up. But uh, he's talked a lot about how difficult it was for him. But you just stick with it, man. Game Pass revealing second wave of games for June. All right. Looks like Dragon Ball Sparking Zero may be getting some GT fighters. Cool. We'll see. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, cool, man. Let's stick with this. Let's stick with all these. Let's get into it. X Defiant is getting Team Deathmatch tomorrow. 
starting Friday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ubisoft has announced the impending arrival of Team Deathmatch due to land in X Defiant tomorrow, June 21st. Slaying! X Defiant has a few modes that FPS fans are very familiar with. For instance, there's Domination, Tried and Tested, Trope, popularized by the likes of Call of Duty. Then there's Escort, which bears strong similarities to the game mode of the same name in Overwatch 2. There isn't anything too tactical, though. Most game modes involve rampant run and gun styles of play. We'll be set to expand on that sentiment tomorrow by introducing Team Deathmatch, a timeless mode that pits two teams against one another, challenges them to get a certain number of kills faster than their opponents. Yeah, so uh, Deathmatch will probably be a welcome addition, which is ultimately a no-holds-barred kill fest of a mode. Yep. <clears throat> so it's basically, well, they already have Hot Shot, which I think a lot of people that like Deathmatch type modes have been playing um, Hot Shot for the most part. I've been playing a lot of Hot Shot. Uh, but in deathmatch and you know the only difference between hot shot hot shot you have to go pick up like uh tokens when you kill people yeah. and uh if the enemy picks up the tokens then you know i mean that's how you score points or you prevent the enemy from getting points is uh by picking up tokens uh whereas deathmatch is just going to be you kill somebody you get points you know what i mean so we'll see that Marvel's Wolverine video game in trouble. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, if you have not heard about this corporation, Sweet Baby Inc., um, just about any time you hear of them having their name, get it out. Look at Soup in chat. Yeah. Anytime you hear about them uh, having their name, their company associated with a project, people are like, oh, Jesus, here we go. Um, this is some contracted company that has been, uh, for one reason or another, found themselves in a position of <clears throat> constantly being tabbed to, to incorporate, um, you know, a lot of... diversity in games but it hasn't played very well you know that's that's kind of their mo is is <clears throat> they get contracted out to go you know incorporate diversity into uh and in in many various forms and fashions into these gameplay experiences and look there's nothing wrong at all with diversity being in games right but it feels weird with the way that Sweet Baby's done a lot of it. It feels very forced. It feels um, like it is, um, you know, anybody that hangs out here very often knows how I feel about, you know, all areas of diversity when it comes to, it doesn't matter if it's race or sexual preference or orientation or whatever. Just live your best life. Just be a good human being, dude. <clears throat> that's what it's about be a good person you know and really just you know as long as people are good people that's all that should really matter you shouldn't be you know just because it's so wild to me that that people get discriminated against just for differences right it's but there's this there's this weird notion and and thing that happens with a lot of stuff in our world where it does get forced you know and um i'm not saying that there doesn't need to be you know awareness about it and it doesn't need to be on all fronts there shouldn't be discrimination there needs to be awareness about there not being prejudice and and there needs to be social justice and, and there needs to be you know equal rights and, and so but it's weird when it does feel <clears throat> just spewed onto everything and it it doesn't feel you know like it's a, a naturally um kind of incorporated thing and it, a lot of times with sweet baby ink what we've seen is that it, it, it a lot of people feel like what's incorporated on, on all fronts of what they do it it, it 
feels very forced. No matter what side of this they try to incorporate in their their entertainment, you know, projects that they're put on, it feels very weird. And it's it's to the detriment of the project always. So let's take a look at this. Follows the company. Uh, having worked on the massive failure of Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, it's sounding as if it's Rip Wolverine, as it is learned, the new video game in development has Sweet Baby Inc. on board as advisors who helped ruin the recent Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League game that massively failed and led to a loss at Warner Brothers of $200 million. Let's be clear here, though. Um, there were a lot of things wrong with Suicide Squad. I mean, you can't attribute all of this to, like, you know, the way this makes this sound is like it was just Sweet Baby Inc. that ruined Suicide Squad. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. No, Warner Brothers definitely, you know, they had their heads up their butts, dude, and, and they, uh, they forced Rocksteady to make something, you know, that was really just trying to scum people out of money and a, a live service game costing a triple a price point and that the content wasn't there and you know it wasn't built for the long haul like they were telling everybody it was and <clears throat> i mean this was this was not a game um that in many 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 areas of development was built to succeed okay and uh, don't get me wrong having sweet baby ink on on as part of the project didn't help them but you know there were many things wrong with this project and this this piece of software but apparently sweet baby ink is back at it with marvel's wolverine video game from insomniac games mark kern aka grums on x the former lead for world of warcraft and the producer of diablo 2 and starcraft goes over big news where a lead artist at major gaming studios revealed his frustrations with the gaming industry Yesterday, a principal artist, a lead at major studios such as Naughty Dog, Rocksteady, and Respawn talked about his frustration at trying to get his designs for beautiful female characters approved at AAA Studios. Tweeted at Grums, every time he concepted the, every time he pitched them, every time he brought it up at meetings, he was ignored. Grums added, inexplicably, each character went from beautiful to grocery store aunties, each revision worse than the last. Regarding the Wolverine video game, Grums points out how bad Jean Grey looks. Look at what happened to Jean Grey from at Insomniac Games Marvel's Wolverine from these leaked early screenshots of the first beautiful model to the masculine world weary version we have today. He tweeted, they are ruining at Marvel. This is Jean Grey? <laughs> Wait, what? He continued, and yes, Marvel's Wolverine is a sweet baby ink game. We were told it was uh, the difficulty of scanning actors or just tricks of light and bad screen caps. We were told we were incels for even questioning it as a game dev. I knew this was BS. As gamers, you knew it was BS from comparisons with Asian games. Um, Grums also revealed the developer who worked uh, revealed the problems within the industry is liberal and woke. But the problems are so bad, the liberal and woke developer felt compelled to reveal what is going on within the gaming industry. This is no fan of gamers or GG2. This is a liberal woke dev with seemingly a lot of talent who is bringing you this information and he hates to have you use it. But he feels strongly enough that even he has to say something, tweeted Grums. This is no myth. This is no conspiracy theory. This is happening in AAA and you were right all along. <laughs> nice picture. <clears throat> Grums explains how Sweet Baby is ruining Marvel's Wolverine. We know that Sweet Baby is involved with Marvel's Wolverine. We know this because of Sweet Baby's own tweets and because a narrative director for Insomniac's Wolverine ran to the defense of Sweet Baby Incorporated. He tweeted, he continued, SBI does two things well, uh, well talked about. They assist with dialogue and story, and they also assist with character design. By now, everyone knows Sweet Baby's public mission to insert... Uh, DEI sensitivity into all games. This is their sole purpose and pitch as a consulting company. Um, Grums added, and this explains why Jean Grey went from great to grocery store auntie. Follow the entire uh, thread below. These are empty token gestures born of a knee-jerk response to misguided empathy, said Grums. They do more harm than good, and they will continue to hurt the entire industry as the tread continu trend continues. It's time to stop. Um... 
something big happened yesterday and most people missed it. What's up, Reject? How you doing, buddy? Every theory we had about the uh, uglification of women in AAA gaming turned out to be true. Look at what happened to Jean Grey. They've got a link here. Here, I'll pull it up real quick. This is quite disgusting if this is actually true, man. And it does. I don't know why it... Bro, are you, are you serious? So, look, I mean, it's it's quite obvious. You, you can tell here that this is not a finished product, right? So, let's... Uh, it's important to be careful here. It's, it, you know, we, we obviously can tell this is not finished. Um, you can tell even from Jean Grey's if, you know, if, if this is, in fact, Jean Grey... <coughs> Um, you know, her, her body is not even finished yet or anything like that. You know, I, I would assume that there's still work to be done here in, in many forms and fashions. Right. So, um, I would say uh, there's still hope. <laughs> it's hard not to jump to, to conclusions here or, or, you know, when when you see because i mean dude this is not what people expect out of a, a representation of gene gray let's be very clear here okay you know this is this is not it right um so i agree um <clears throat> this is definitely gene gray you can see it right here hero gene gray formal Interesting. Interesting. Um, yeah, so we know that Sweet Baby is involved with Marvel's Wolverine. We know this because of Sweet Baby's own tweets and because a narrative director for Insomniac's Wolverine game ran the defense of SBI. Yeah. The answer is no, none of these changes help. They don't help the industry played by layoff and soft sales. They don't help gamers, many of whom are women who want to play beautiful female characters. They don't help trans who also want to pass as beautiful women. Um, and uh, ellipses, that's from uh, Grums. Um, look man, yeah, I think uh, it, if you don't know who Sweet Baby Inc. is at this point, let me just, I, I gave everybody a, uh, pretty good synopsis of, of who they are but uh, narrative development and cons consultation based in Montreal um, founded by former Ubi developers including scriptwriter Kim Belair and product manager David Bedard the company consults on video game narratives uh, during development to promote diversity equity and inclusion within game narratives um So, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, right? Don't get me wrong. It's not necessarily a bad thing. But, um, there, there is this, I think, very fine line between... Um, Oversaturating content with like forcing it basically you're forcing you're forcing too much of the content to uh just be polluted with this kind of narrative instead of it just being you know more of a naturally um incorporated feeling more naturally incorporated right and and it feels like for most people that's where sweet baby ink is with a lot of this stuff it feels like whenever they have their hands on a project um it's just grossly uh, polluted with with too much <clears throat> too much of this kind of notion and so it, it's to the detriment of these projects normally uh, just kind of like what we read yeah I mean even you know the developers can't really get anything done without it constantly you know their work being belittled and um 
having to go back and redo stuff and redo stuff and redo stuff and redo stuff, you know what I mean? And it's like, Jesus. I mean, to the point of where even, you know, a, a traditional character like, dude, we're talking about X-Men characters, right? Like Jean Grey. I mean, they're, Jean Grey is traditionally, you know, I mean, we all know what Jean Grey traditionally looks like. She's been portrayed as from, and not that it has to be that way, but I mean, you know, that's what people expect. And because Sweet Baby Inc. has their hands on this, now you're talking about, you know, that was actually a pretty good, I think, definition of what Sweet Baby's made them turn Jean Grey into was, you know, <clears throat> basically like a an upper middle-aged, uh, you know, anti-looking kind of character. It doesn't look like Jean Grey, you know, which is, it's weird. It, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, to be honest. You know, <clears throat> and that, I think that's where you're getting at with this situation of, of things being um, just pushed too far, right? Again, I don't, I, I think it's great to, it, things, the way things used to always be in video games being stereotypical, you know, with just, Caucasian characters and and uh, things like that. We've moved a long ways, you know, heterosexual Caucasian characters with blue eyes and blonde hair or whatever. We've moved a long ways and that's great. And, but it, 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 it also needs to, you know, it's, it's going a little bit too far with Sweet Baby. I'll say that for sure. All right, one second, guys. Microsoft is refunding Redfall's Biteback Edition. I mean, if this doesn't tell you that game's dead, nothing does. You know? So, it was recently revealed the development path for 2023's vampire slaying game Redfall was coming to an abrupt end as Microsoft moved to shut down Arcane Austin, among other studios. Unfortunately, also Tango. Um which is blowing everybody's minds. Redfall was released in May of 2023 to a crushingly negative reception, given that the game was plagued with bugs, barren, and bursting with bizarre AI-driven enemies. Just a couple of weeks back, the Redfall's final update was released by Arcane Austin before the ultimate closure of the studio. Now, thanks to the fact that uh, promised content can't be delivered, Microsoft is issuing automatic refunds on Steam and Xbox to those who purchased the Byteback Edition or upgrade of Redfall. All bark and no bite. I mean, there were many of us in this community, myself included, that went, I don't see it. Redfall, it's just not there, you know. Um, and it wasn't. Following the final major update to Redfall, it's been confirmed by several players that Microsoft is automatically refunding them to make up for the content they'll never get. Confirmed by reports handed to Windows Central, the Bethesda Game Studios is also issuing refunds, but the path to obtaining them is a little tougher. Redfall won't be missed by too many. It's a shame that it ended up how it did. I was skeptical about Redfall and abandoned it at launch because of the issues, but ultimately returned to the game several months later. I had a great time with it. Run of the mill open world title with some basic RPG elements and a little co-op mixed in for good measure. It wasn't that bad. I had a great time playing it. Um, I mean, I think... I think here's the deal. When you're talking about a game like this, there wasn't really anything that made this game stand out, was there? It was... There was nothing about this title that looked special or super intriguing in the first place. And... Um, they were promoting it heavily. And what was funny was when they were promoting it, they would say things like, it was almost like they were trying to imprint the notion into gamers' minds that this game was going to be something special. Look at how detailed it is. Look at how good it looks. And it didn't look, the things they were saying, it 
didn't match up with what I was seeing. You know, and we saw a lot of that same sentiment throughout our community members saying that it's not what they're saying it is, you know, and it's a pretty good sign that it's probably not going to be the kind of experience that you would like to see in a game as well. So, um, you know, quite often um, for, for games that release, you know, and not always, don't get me wrong. Not always. There are plenty of examples out there, but uh, quite often, you know, first impressions mean a lot. And especially when you're talking live service, live service is a big deal because if you don't grab people's uh, attention initially and bring in a significant player base where you can at least give them the impression there is great content to start with and leave them with the notion that if there's good stuff to start with, there's probably more to come. You're going to lose a lot of potential customers and potential player base for the future. That's, I think, one of the largest areas in which they failed. It's hard for a game like this. And again, don't get me wrong. There are plenty of games, live service games, MMOs that have turned things around and, and done well. But you're also talking about, I'll give you an example of, Final Fantasy 14. You're talking about a game that was terrible on launch, and they basically broke that game that that game down, rebuilt it, and it's been a phenomenal success, right, for Square. But you're also talking about a game that has the the Final Fantasy name behind it and the Square, you know, the Square name behind it. So it's uh it had something a little bit more than what Redfall had and just a name to bring people back and, and um, give them a little bit more hope, I think. the uh, I think that was one of their biggest issues here. This game uh, just initially out the gate wasn't wasn't enough to show people that there was anything worth coming back to and and the, these types of games you know first impressions are, are a pretty big deal live service games and I just don't think it was there I think everybody saw right out the gate that especially on release this game wasn't going to last very long and we were right PlayStation leak Teases next PS2 game coming to PS5 and PS4. A new leak seems to have revealed ahead of time the next PlayStation 2 game that will soon be released for PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4. Earlier this month, Sony made many PlayStation fans ecstatic when it announced it would begin bringing over classic PS2 games to modern hardware. First initiative of this came past uh, this past week when Star Wars The Clone Wars, Tomb Raider Legend, and Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus all became viable in the PlayStation Store. Now ahead of the announcement of July's incoming wave of PlayStation Classics, the identity of one of PS2 titles looks to have been divulged. Um, Time Splitters uh, has gotten a new rating in Taiwan. Rated for both PS5 and PS4, which implies it is probably going to be one of the new additions to the PS Store as soon as this coming month. No comment from Sony, so nothing official here. Grain of salt, but it is looking promising, all right? Time splitters quite potentially coming to PS5 and PS4. All right. Amazon Luna has added games from GOG and launches in three more countries. <clears throat> Looks like Austria, the Netherlands, and Poland. Banger, banger. I want to play this so bad. Banger, bangers. Selection of GOG's DRM-free games are now available on cloud gaming service Amazon Luna, which has launched in three additional countries. As of today, Luna Plus subscribers and Amazon Prime members can buy and play over 40 games from the GOG store. Titles available include Baldur's Gate 3, Stardew Valley, Hollow Knight, and Cuphead, with cloud saves and achievements shared across the two platforms. Luna can be played on a number of devices, including PC, Mac, iOS, Android, Fire Tablets, Fire TV, and Select, LG, and Samsung Smart TVs. It supports the Amazon Luna controller, various third-party peripherals, including Xbox One and PS4 pads, plus mouse and keyboard. Players can also use their phone as a controller for some games. Amazon has also announced the launch of the Luna in Austria, the Netherlands, and Poland. The service was already available in the US, Canada, UK, Germany, France, Italy, and Spain. We're excited to team up with Amazon Luna to give customers more choice and flexibility in how they play, said GOG Managing Director. I can't pronounce this, I'm sorry. 
We trust Amazon to maintain GOG's high, high standard for player experience no matter where they play. Great opportunity to get our platform in front of a new audience of gamers on Fire TV and Fire Tablets. This is just the beginning and we will be adding more titles on an ongoing basis. GOG also launched its summer sale today running until July 10th. It includes over 6,000 offers and discounts of up to 95% according to the company. Nice. Cool. Pull that up real quick. Let's look at that. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, this isn't a big surprise, really, if you don't know. Amazon and GOG have kind of been in cahoots for a while. A lot of times, uh, you'll see Amazon Prime Gaming give away games that will actually be for GOG's platform. Um, GOG, if you don't know, good old games, um, is a platform owned and run by... CDPR um, and it is DRM free which is really really nice if you don't know what that means it means that literally you can have any game in your library on this platform downloaded and installed and you do not have to be connected to the internet to play those games is again as long as it doesn't require the game itself doesn't require any kind of online component right um, so single player games things like that like take something like the witcher 3 or, or whatever and then you can play that game as long as it's downloaded and installed it's not going to require a, a, an internet connection so this entire platform is drm free right um and you can see their summer sales right here they're also highlighting their luna stuff right redefine your gaming experience uh gog and luna cool they got that their uh their summer sale has popped off Obviously, this is a uh, CDPR owned, CD Project Red owned platform. So the summer sale is going on for over 20 more days. But Cyberpunk, which are, you're going to have a lot of CDPR stuff on here. Um, but they've got a lot of other cool stuff too, man. So it's a nice, pla nice platform, consumer friendly, uh, especially because of the DRM free stuff. All right. Why Mar Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection isn't on Xbox consoles? When Marvel vs. Capcom Fight Collection was announced at the Nintendo Direct on Tuesday, it was met with overwhelming praise from fans around the world. The only problem was that Marvel vs. Capcom Fight Collection isn't going to be available on Xbox consoles. No, when it launches later this year, it will be available only on Switch, PS4, Playable on PS5 and Steam, but why not Xbox? According to a new report from Windows Central, it has to do with Capcom's MT framework that the games are built on. The outlet source say the uh, Capcom has no pipeline for porting older MT framework titles to Xbox's modern, modern system, which makes it more expensive to deliver the same titles than it would porting them to PlayStation 4, Switch, or PC. Insider Gaming has reached out directly to Microsoft and Catcom for comment on this report. Should a response be received, this story will be updated accordingly. This uh, this collection looks like a banger, though, I must say. And we'll talk a little bit more about it in a moment. Beyond Good and Evil delisted ahead of their 20th anniversary edition reveal this week. Yubi is pulling the game from digital storefronts. Um... At the request of the publisher, Beyond Good and Evil is unlisted on the Steam store and will not appear in search, reads a product page on Valve's PC Marketplace. While the game is still available on GOG, it's also been pulled from sale on the Xbox store. Ubisoft said this week that it's planning to share news about Beyond Good and Evil 20th Anniversary Edition on Thursday, uh, which is today, so we'll see. The title is set to appear during the Limited Run Game Showcase, which will air June 20th, today at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, that's 1 p.m. our time. Um... Maybe we'll watch this. I don't know. Probably not. We'll probably just recap this tomorrow. Because <clears throat> basically all limited run limited run games is, is you know, it, it's a very cool uh, organization. I like what they do. But it's, it's uh, probably just worth recapping tomorrow. So we'll look into it tomorrow morning in the news. And uh, 7 p.m. BST. Given Beyond Good and Evil is being removed from the digital marketplaces, it's possible the publisher could be planning to release the new edition of the game, coinciding with a showcase. Following multiple leaks, including 
uh, you'd be mistakenly releasing an early version of the game to some of its customers. The company said last November that the previously unannounced Beyond Good and Evil 20th Anniversary Edition would be released in early 2024 for unspecified platforms. Yubi has been planning a sequel to Beyond Good and Evil for the best part of two decades. Yes, it's been quite the meme. But the project's development has reportedly suffered a series of setbacks. I mean, I would say that's quite obvious if it's been, <laughs> you know, kind of being planned and developed for 20 years now. Um, including the death of its creative director, uh, Emile Morel, last year. Game Pass reveals the second wave of games for this month. Let's see what we got here. Let's get to the list. Give it to me. Second wave of new Xbox Game Pass titles for June. Still Wakes the Deep. Now available. Minecraft Tricky Trials Update. Available now. My Time at Sand Rock. Available yesterday. Kerp uh, Kaplerth. Available today. EA Sports FC 24. Available on June 25th. Steam World Dig and Steam World Dig 2 on the 26th. And Robin Hood Sherwood Builders on the 27th, all right? There you go. I'll link this to you if you need the list. Amazon's Throne and Liberty MMO is coming to the West in September. Company will be hoping for another Lost Ark-sized hit from this free-to-play game. Amazon has revealed when it will bring the free-to-play MMO Throne and Liberty to the Americas, Europe, and Japan. The company will release the uh, NCSoft-developed title in those regions on PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S on September 17th. There will be full cross-platform support. Open beta will take place in July, and you can sign up for that through the game's website, which is linked here. So I'll link this article to you guys if you're interested. Throne of Liberty, which was originally supposed to be a direct sequel to the original Lineage, debuted in Korea last year after a lengthy development process. It has both player versus player and player versus environmental combat. Um, and you can join guilds and form alliances to help you succeed. Amazon says battles can accommodate thousands of players at the same time. The action takes place in an open world called Solaceum, where the weather can impact the effectiveness of your weapons and even open up new routes. Your character can shape shift into creatures that can navigate sea and air more quickly. You'll even be able to transform into slain bosses to help out your side in battles. Let's take a look at this. Brother! I hate it when they embed and it doesn't let you mess. Long ago, the Star of Silveth shattered. Its fragments spread across the land, granting immense power to a lucky few. But where there is light, there is also darkness. Malevolent forces have arisen. Seeking to claim the power of the stars for themselves. You must harness this celestial power. Fight back against the Archeum Legion. And free our world. Silesium is a vast... I swear to God, I've seen more flying well beasts in games here lately. It is... It is is it just a weird coincidence? Shape shift into legendary creatures to carry you Yo, the air. what would be cool to put in this game? Let's take a well out of the water, make it look just a little bit different, and but instead it swims through the air. I've seen so many of them. Take up arms and join others as you fight alongside fellow guild members. As your skill grows, you'll unlock powerful new abilities. Adjust your fighting style to counter your enemies. Use ranged attacks to draw your enemies in. Then swap to hard-hitting melee to finish them off. The Legion isn't the only enemy you'll need to fight. 
battle other players in PvP dungeons. Player-controlled castle sieges. Open world combat. And conquest battles for territory. Gather your guild. Prepare for battle and claim the throne. I don't know. Tell me your lost arc without telling me your lost arc. You know what I mean? Funny enough, being published by Amazon. It didn't look bad. Looks a lot like lost arc, though. Yeah. Amazon signed a deal with NCSoft in 2023 to publish um, Throne and Liberty in North America, South America, Europe, and Japan on the heels of Lost Ark's success. That game from South Korea developer Smilegate turned out to be a huge hit with a peak of 1.3 million concurrent players on Steam. Over two years later, Lost Ark is still going strong with an average Steam concurrent player count of nearly 56,000 in May. Despite how well Lost Ark and before that New World Performed for Amazon Games. The division has gone through some rough spells over the last several years. Soon after its first in house game, Crucible, debuted in May of 2020, Amazon pulled it back into beta status before completely shutting down the free to play shooter outright a few months later. Excuse me, last year, Amazon laid off around 300 workers from its games division as part of a broader downsizing. Um, yeah, they've got a Lord of the Rings MMO they're working on, publishing the next Tomb Raider game. Yeah, so we'll see what else comes. But uh, if you're interested in this, there's a link to sign up for the beta, okay? Here you go. Yay, yay. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to recap everything that we, uh, we we saw on the showcase for Nintendo on Tuesday. Um, so on Tuesday, uh, directly after our news segment, we, we got to watch the Nintendo Showcase, Nintendo Direct, and it was actually surprisingly very, very good. I wasn't expecting much because two reasons. I don't normally expect much out of Nintendo um, Directs. They're normally mediocre at best for me. Uh, you know, it just one of those things. I'm not usually blown away by Nintendo Direct Showcases. Um, and... The other thing is that I was just not expecting a whole lot with the fact that that we know their new hardware is coming at the beginning of next year. We know they're going to have a lot of software they're working on right now for that hardware. And I just didn't, ex you know, I expected this to be a little bit lackluster because we know that they've got a lot of resources devoted towards the new hardware and the new software coming for the new hardware, right? And so I just felt like this was probably not going to show a whole lot uh, for what they currently have coming to us um, because I didn't expect anything for the new hardware or software. Obviously, that'll come later in the year. But um, uh, I was really pleasantly surprised. I felt like they did a really good job here. They had a lot. They have a lot coming still, even for the current uh, hardware, the current Switch and. And um, it, it was very, very good. I was really surprised. So we'll uh, we'll recap this real quick. Everything announced at the June 2024 Nintendo Direct. <clears throat> um, so they've got the entire showcase here. You can watch again. It's roughly what? What are we talking here? 40 minutes long, 42 minutes long. Um, they've got Mar Mario and Luigi series returns with Brothership. This looked really cool. Let's watch this real quick. We won't watch all these trailers, but we will watch an amount of them. Luigi?
Definitely does have those Super Mario RPG vibes, huh? November 7th. Looks pretty cool, man. Donkey Kong Country Returns HD, dude. This is uh, pretty hype. This was a really cool thing to see. I'm not going to show that trailer, but uh, you know, you can take a look at it. I'll link this if you guys want. Dragon Quest uh, 3 HD 2D Remake. Now, it's not just actually Dragon Quest 3. They're bringing um, Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3, which is awesome. It looks really good. Um... Super Mario Party Jamboree launches on October 17th. This is a uh, pretty big hype. This is pretty cool. The latest game in the Mario Party series takes place on an enormous island resort. Get ready to jump into the biggest selection of Mario Party minigames yet in Super Mario Party Jamboree. It's about First, flipping time, see boy. New, boards where new Mario Party game. The most stars. Take the escalators to travel between floors in Rainbow Galleria. Use in-game coins to get a star at half price when they're on flash sale. But act fast. Ride around and stay on track in Rollum Raceway. With the new Turbo Dice item, you can move up to 40 spaces with a lucky roll. Here on Goomba Lagoon, the ebb and flow of the tide can change your path. And things really get mixed up when the volcano blows its top. Along with five new game boards, two boards from previous Mario Party games make their return. Some mini games are action packed challenges, speed trials, a battle of wits, and more. And some are controlled by gently shaking or tilting your Joy-Con controllers. With over 110 mini-games, there's a wide variety to enjoy. Also, up to 20 players can go head-to-head -head online in the Coupathlon mode. Compete against your rivals and aim for first place. Try your best to come out on top. Wait, there are even more new modes? The biggest Mario Party yet will soon be underway when the Super Mario Party Jamboree game launches on the Nintendo Switch system October 17th. Heck yeah. Very cool. This is big hype too. Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom star, uh, stars Zelda, not Link. This is pretty wild. I mean, we we heard... We had seen stuff in the news. We'd seen articles talking about how there was a lot of information coming out about there was a new Zelda game coming. It was just... I did not expect it yet. And I expected it to be something more along the lines of we were going to be getting some kind of Zelda game for the new hardware released with the new hardware, you know? And whatever that software would have been. But it's already here. It's really kind of surprising considering how you know quick this is after tears of the kingdom you know
Hello, everyone. I'm A.G. Aonuma, producer of the Legend of Zelda series. What you just saw was the latest installment, The Legend of Zelda, Echoes of Wisdom. This time around, Link has vanished. Now, it's up to Princess Zelda to step into the protagonist role. You might be thinking, will Zelda fight with a sword then? Here, we wanted to create a new gameplay style that breaks conventions seen in past Legend of Zelda games with a top-down perspective. To explain more, please take a look at this video. Stolen away. Across the vast lands of Hyrule, strange rifts have appeared and have taken many people, including Link. Now alone, Zelda meets the fairy Tri, receives a mysterious staff called the Tri-Rod, and sets off on a journey across Hyrule to save her kingdom. By waving the Tri-Rod at a table she found, Zelda learned how to create an imitation of it called an Echo. Once you learn an echo of something, you can recreate it whenever you'd like. Even if there's a wall blocking your path, you can create echoes of tables to get a leg up. Just like that. You can create wooden boxes, old beds, and unusual things like water blocks. How you use them separately or together is entirely up to you. Learn and create echoes of things you find while exploring Hyrule. You might be surprised at what you discover. Even battles will look different. You could pick up and throw a rock echo, for example. Oh, what's up, Troop? That's not all, though. You can also yeah, create I got some echoes of monsters. <laughs> After yeah, doing so, when I started the stream today, I was like, I'm a little sunburnt. I went to the pool yesterday, man. Monsters uh, have different abilities, so choose the one you want to create based on the situation. <laughs> Wisdom is key, after oh, all. That's all right. It looks worse than it actually is. It looks worse on the, on the camera. Yeah, I don't know why. It might just be the, the hues or something like that. But yeah, I'm a little pink. In a high rule without Link, sunscreen those tentacles. The fate of the yeah. kingdom is now. I wasn't even out there that long. Hands. It's just I haven't been out in the sun too much yet this year, so I'm, I'm a little sensitive. How was that? You know, I'm a little sensitive. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of the echo ability, which channels Princess Zelda's wisdom. There are a lot of echoes in this game. To be honest, I haven't counted them all yet. How you solve puzzles and battle enemies will change depending on the echoes used. In short, we've created a game where each player's experience will be different. The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom launches September 26th. A Nintendo Switch Lite system inspired by the Legend of Zelda series will also be available at launch. We hope you're looking forward to playing as Zelda in this new adventure. Any news on Mac games? No, because nobody cares about that. Oh, uh, has it true? Yeah. Yeah. What's well, crazy is that like, uh, dude, my face <laughs> didn't get burned at all, dude. I don't know what happened. I had on uh, some of my like uh, tattoo lotion and stuff yesterday. So it might have just uh, kind of brought in the sun a little bit more on my, my torso and my arms and stuff. So I don't know. Um, but like my face isn't burn at all. It's just, it's just like the top of my chest and my shoulders and stuff, but I didn't have a hat on or anything yesterday. I was just out at the pool, no hat or anything. My face is fine. <laughs> my face isn't burn at all. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know how that happened, dude. I didn't put sunscreen on anything, you know, but like my, my the top of my chest and my, my shoulders and stuff got burnt, but my face didn't. I don't know how. I have no idea how that works. Yeah, really weird. But there you go. That's the new Zelda game looking pretty dope. Metroid Prime 4, let's go. Let's watch this one. Another big hype. This was a, one of the best Nintendo Directs I've seen in a long time, dude.
Here's the here's the news that we have about games on Mac, Soup. Games on Mac will never be as good as games on PC. So you should just switch over. Right? Metroid Prime 4, baby, let's go! Everything else. Nintendo World Championships, NES Edition, got an overview ahead of its release next month. Fairy Tale 2 is announced and launches this winter. Apple Arcade Exclusive Fantasian finally coming to the Switch. Basketball is coming to Nintendo Switch Sports as part of a free update this summer. Mio Memories and Orbit was unveiled and launches in 2025. Yeah. Disney Illusion Island getting an update later today. Uh, Hello Kitty Island Adventures coming to the Switch in 2025. Looney Tunes Wacky World of Sports launches in fall. Uh, free Among Us update comes out later today. Marvelous, that was probably yesterday. Marvelous USA revealed uh, Formasia comes out on November 1st. Uh, Funko Fusion got a dedicated Nintendo Direct segment. Nintendo showed off Luigi's Mansion 2D ahead of its June 27th launch. Yeah. The new Dimpin' Men was announced. Launched for free on July 22nd. Metal Slug Attack Reloaded got a surprise announcement and released today i think all these today releases were actually on tuesday darkest dungeon 2 is coming to nintendo switch legend of zelda link to the past four swords metroid Va uh, metroid zero mission turok dinosaur hunter and perfect dark are all coming to switch online or they did already phantom brave the lost hero uh comes out in 2025 marvel vs. capcom fighting collection was a big hype uh rk classics brings several classic marvel games from Capcom to Nintendo Switch sometime later this year. We talked about this already this morning and the fact that uh, there will not be, right now anyways, this game will not be on Xbox. Apparently there's some issue with these classic games being ported to uh, Xbox's platform. Um, Just Dance 2025 Edition received a trailer. Nintendo reaffirmed that LEGO Horizon Adventures is coming to the Switch. Stray is coming to the Switch sometime later this year. Also very good. Tales of the Shire, Lord of the Rings game coming to the Switch. Also Ace Attorney Investigations Collection launching on September 6th. The 100 Line Last Defense Academy was announced and received an early 2025 release window. And Romancing Saga 2 is getting a full remake called Revenge of the Seven and coming out on October 24th. What was the game? What was the name of the little game? Um... Was it this one? Is it this? I think it's this one. Yeah, it's this one. Uh, I'll watch the uh, trailer for this real quick because this this is like a little uh, monster collecting kind of take think Pokemon, but actually more Power World ish kind of game but not on the same scale of pal world actually it's almost kind of like something in between pokemon and pal world take a look at this they don't have a lot of trailers for it right now do they Wait, is it a C? I thought it was a G. Yeah, what the crap? There we go. This is from the Nintendo Direct. Here we go. So this is the last trailer we'll watch for the uh, your Nintendo Direct recap. This is Felicidad, a realm of monsters. Those who command and raise them are called Farmagia and play a vital role in the land's civilization. Ten of Farmagia must rise up against the oppressive Magus to stop his vicious reign of the underworld. Raise monsters and lead them into the fight against the Magus' army. Plant seeds, then cultivate, and harvest them to make your buddies come to life. They can then be trained for battle. Give commands to your monsters and exploit enemy weaknesses in action-packed combat. 
Merge all of the battle buddies in your party to call forth a giant fusion summon and wreak havoc on your foes. Join the rebellion to stop the Magus in Farmagia, launching on Nintendo Farmagia. Switch November 1st. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, man. <clears throat> that one looks kind of cool, too. But we'll see. We'll see. All in all, the Nintendo Direct on Tuesday was a banger, dude. Can confirm. Oh. yeah it was uh there was a lot of good stuff in there it really was and i was not really expecting it to be honest so um pleasantly surprised pleasantly surprised very good stuff i literally was like pog face whenever the uh metroid ship you know samus's ship was coming down i knew what it was and uh it was just kind of incredible to see that finally coming after so many years of waiting on metroid uh metroid 4 to to hit you know it's kind of cool that's the jam man that's the news news my dudes we're gonna uh get ready to play games and uh i don't know probably go tsushima but if uh there's people's hanging out and they want to play x defiant you know i can usually be swayed <laughs> i can usually be swayed I'm, I'm having a little bit of some vibes for FPSing today. I don't know, man. Um, I'm really loving Ghost of Tsushima as well, but I don't know. I'm in that I'm in that mood today. So if people want to hang out and play some FPS, let me know. And like, I can probably, I, don't know, I might be able to be swayed to just hang out and play some community uh, X Defiant today. So uh, I don't know. Great news segment, guys. I appreciate it. Going to need a guide for Hollow Knight. Yeah, I understand. I understand that. It's uh, it's it's one of those uh, it's one of those games that uh, there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it, and um, it's uh, see what f different. Di I think that's the epitome of um, people enjoying playing games in different ways, right? Um, nice dude. Congrats. For me, it, it was more about like, you know, those even uh, Metroidvanias are one of my favorite types of games to play. And <clears throat> I can definitely get stuck in them from time to time because really, really well developed Metroidvanias, um, are fairly large, uh, map wise. And they sometimes will present, uh, obstacles as far as, knowing what you need um skill wise to get into another area or whatever uh, you know and it it definitely presents me with obstacles but i enjoy the challenge of figuring that stuff out you know whereas you know there are a lot of people that they don't want to struggle through that and i i respect that i understand that for sure yeah 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 i mean um again it's uh i i completely understand it i get it man I get it. Yeah. I, uh, I, uh, I understand where it's, it's one of those things. It's like, you know, do, do you want to struggle through it? Do you want to, do you feel like you're wasting time? And I, I definitely, I, I, I get to a point in a lot of my games where it's like, do I want to waste time with certain things? I, I'm a pretty slow game player, you know, I, I like to enjoy my, um, <clears throat> experiences i don't try to rush through stuff but there are definitely definitely occasions where uh i mean i've leaned on the community before and been like dude just tell me tell me what i need to do there was even one section in hollow knight i i remember where i was like oh, bro where is this you know i had I, I had community members tell me where i needed to go for one thing i remember it explicitly there was one thing that i just couldn't figure out where this was and they they told me you know <laughs> it was uh kind of molding for me but, uh, you know, there are certain things whenever I play games too, like, um, big open world stuff like Witcher three, I was planning on doing all the open world nodes and stuff. And it got to where it was like, man, it's just going to be a bunch of filler bull crap. You know, it's all the same stuff. It's like, go destroy the enemy, you know, the monster nest or, you know, something like that. It's like, ah, I'm not doing this. It's just going to feel repetitive and, and not worth the time, you know, cool. um, Oh yeah, 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. But again, I mean, using a gun, and this is the thing. I think this, this is the thing for people. I am willing to lose time in a game to get it done myself, right? I'm willing to lose time in a game to get it done myself because I enjoy the experience and the challenge of not having to get spoilers, right? Or, or, but I have the, you know, I, I also have the time to devote to that kind of experience where not everybody does. So not everybody has the time to devote to just spending more time than they would necessarily need to, to be able to, to have that kind of experience, right? So I understand why a lot of people will use guides because, um, you know, especially a lot of people are very limited on their game gameplay time and, and they want the experience of the game. They want, they want to play the game. They want to experience the game, but they just can't afford really to, to be spending exponential amounts of time doing basically nothing, but trying to figure out how to get to the next area or something like that. Right. So, yeah, I get it. But I mean, Metroidvanias are also one of those things that I've been playing for a long time. I mean, a long time. And, but I mean, like I said, there was one section, one, one, one place that wasn't, if I recall, not a necessity, but um, I couldn't figure out where this place was. Um, I knew there was somewhere, and I knew I was close to it, but I couldn't figure out how to get in there. And I finally just relinquished and was like, yo, what, how, 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 how do I get into this place? And they, they told me, you know, chat told me. But other than that, yeah, the rest of Hollow Knight was basically... Now, I also, I did not get the pure good ending, and the, they, the chat told me how to get the pure good ending and it didn't take too long so i went back after i got my own ending went back and got the pure good ending as well so right yeah well that's the big thing right in metroidvania it's all about the skills you get so you start off very basic and <clears throat> you're very limited in the areas you can get to because of that and as you progress you get different you know especially the skills you get in, in large part are about movement and they help you navigate to areas you couldn't access previously right that's the like one of the biggest defining factors of of are you playing a metroidvania <laughs> you know yeah i mean that's that's what it is right yeah there are a lot of different skills you get but again i think it's just you know that what we're talking about is just it's not a, a right or wrong way to play a game right it's it's what is best for each individual person and, and your not only preference for the way to play a game but what you have time to devote to a game too right <clears throat> so it's uh it's just one of those things man just one of those things there's an awesome news segment guys <laughs> i appreciate it we're gonna play some games man um yeah so hope everybody had a great day off yesterday uh, uh, or had a great day yesterday while I had my day off from streaming. Um, we'll probably play Ghost of Tsushima, some X Defiant. We'll do some of that kind of stuff today, and and uh, I don't know. We'll talk about it. But uh, if anybody was hanging out today and you're not familiar with what we do here, we're live six days a week, every day. But Wednesday we start off at 6 a.m. CST CDT. That is 7 a.m. Eastern or 4 a.m. Pacific time. Kicking it off with video gaming news, staying current with what's happening in the industry, as well as promoting a healthier, better industry for us as consumers and video gaming enthusiasts. Then we go on and play games like we're about to do right now. Uh, we have a lot of fun playing games. I try to play games uh, with the community uh, quite often, as well as we just enjoy the experience of me playing, um, you know, single player campaigns a lot too, and and uh, ex sharing those experiences together. Most of my playthroughs are going to be, uh, if not all of them, first time playthroughs, and and um, yeah, it's just a good time, man. We have a lot of cool people here. It's all about you know promoting and and you know cultivating a welcoming experience it's a safe place for people to come hang out and enjoy video games and 
create awesome friendships and, and spread good vibes, man. That's what it's all about. Kind of be void of negativity and toxicity and, and just have a good time together, man. So if you can dig that, come be a part of what we do. We're always looking for more awesome people to grow our uh, already amazing community. All right. So other than that, stay healthy, stay safe, be kind. Happy Thursday. Keep on grinding. The weekend is right around the corner. And... Um, I don't know. I'm going to run us an outro real quick. And as soon as it is over, I'll be right back up here and we will start getting prepared for playing games for the rest of the day. I'll see you in one second.